So why is it that a lot of us fail to not even stick, but a lot of times not even get started with our long-term fitness goals? You know, even if we temporarily feel really motivated, let's say you were motivated this year to get into shape, so you promise yourself you're gonna start working out for a year consequently, and you know, either you don't, you know, after especially new year resolutions, either you don't get started at all, or you get started and somewhere along the way, you lose that motivation that was initially overwhelming you. You know, you felt like, damn it, I'm going to do this. There's nothing that's going to stop me. Now, this is because we tend to like to base our willingness to act with these goals on feeling that initial high of motivation, that perfect emotional balanced state. You know, we expect that we're going to feel like that every single time we work out for the rest of the year, but that's not the case, is it? So you have to realize that with everything, any long-term goal and, you know, either that's fitness, life, um, work, whatever the case might be, feeling good and feeling happy are two things that are not always in balance. You know, a lot of times with all the goals, no matter how passionate we are about achieving them, no matter how much we think we like, you know, even with exercise, even if you're a big fan of exercise, it's not like you're going to wake up every day for the rest of the year super motivated to work out. I have a lot of days. I don't feel like that. So realize that, that feeling good temporarily in the moment and feeling happy long terms are two different things. And you have to compromise with pushing yourself sometimes when you're not feeling good to engage into that habit that's going to build that long term, balanced, healthy, happy lifestyle. So how do you deal with this then? You know, how do you deal with this days that you lack motivation to get started? It's very simple. And I've talked about this in the avalanche effect, another video, I'm going to link it above. You can check it out after this video as well, if you need some more motivation, but you simply have to learn to break down these habits into smaller actionable steps that are more easily digestible. So what do I mean? Let's say working out, you're sitting on the couch today, you came back from work, you're really drained or tired, you know, um, and you want to work out in a way, but you also feel super bored. You just want to eat and watch TV. So what do you do? Well, break down your workout into three small digestible actionable steps. Number one, preparation. This is basically putting on the clothes that you're going to work out in or, you know, prepping, prepping your bag if you want to go train at a park or whatever it is, whatever it is that you train. And, you know, also preparing your equipment, you know, if you train at home, for example. So step number one, preparation. Step number two, warm up. Step number three, the actual workout. So at that point, when you're sitting on the couch, super lazy, try to tell yourself that you only have to do step number one. And, you know, if you still don't feel like doing that, just tell yourself, okay, I'm going to put on my clothes. I'm going to prep my equipment. And after that, if I don't feel like training, I'm simply not going to train. So doing that, you know, using this mind hack and trying to, in a way, uh, convince your lazy monkey mind or lizard brain, whatever term you like to use, is going to help you get over that first and most difficult hump. You know, that tendency to feel stuck, feel stuck in the quicksand of laziness, procrastination. Uh, and that's, you know, I know that feeling and it's difficult to override it a lot of times. So by engaging into step Number one, you get over um, 
that most difficult first hump. Now, as you get started, you start moving, you put on some clothes, uh, your body's chemistry changes because, you know, sitting and moving are different. You're now building momentum. You feel a little bit better um, putting on your clothes and all that. You've already invested a little bit of time and effort. So, you know, you're thinking maybe step number two, isn't that much to do? Maybe I can warm up. So tell yourself you're just going to warm up. And after that, if you don't feel like training, you don't really have to train. So convince yourself in the same way, just as with step number one, that, you know, you just have to warm up, nothing else required after that. And you'll see that once you do the warm up, the workout is basically done. You know, I've, with all the people that I train and I use this trick, uh, there's never been a person that told me that, you know, I went through step number one and step number two and didn't complete it, my workout. So, you know, once you've invested that time and that effort, and once you start moving, build that momentum, feeling better now that you're moving, your energy goes up, you know, cause uh, that's another thing when you're sitting, uh, uh, you're just gonna feel like sitting more. Um, and when you're moving, it's easier to get moving more because you know your body wakes up. These are three really simple steps to use with these situations. And these can be applied anywhere in life. You know, no matter what you are going through, let's say you're going through existential problems. Just try breaking your problems into smaller problems, into actionable steps. Uh, steps that you will create momentum, that will help you move towards a direction that will help you try different things. Um, let's say you're new in a town, for example, and you're feeling lonely, you don't have friends. A friend of mine moved from the States now to Europe and was talking about him with that, uh, about that this morning. So uh, you just have to make little actionable steps that will get you out of the problem, let's say loneliness, and towards a solution. Uh, talk to one person per day. One person that you know you find that maybe you can share common ground or common interests. Uh, and of course, you know, not every attempt will be successful, but eventually you'll meet people that you'll like hanging out with. You go to meetups, go to um, whatever, seminars, Toastmasters, if you like public speaking, um, any kind of topic, you know, you can always find nowadays people online that meet up in groups and talk about that. So uh, I'm a little bit all over the place today, but I like to think a lot of exercise as a metaphor for so many more things in life. And not only that, but once you get into a routine of exercising, of eating healthier or feeling better, because your physiology affects your psychology, that creates wild spread changes in your life. And it's not just me telling these things, making, making them up from my head. These are also shown in studies. So um, exercise, eating healthy and all these things can build momentum for a lot more positive changes. Uh, they can give you confidence. And uh, a final metaphor, probably used too many metaphors today, but I also like to think these situations as when I was a kid, and I wanted to go into the sea to swim. And sometimes the sea was too cold. So, you know, I would put my foot in and, you know, maybe even just my toe. And I wouldn't like the fact that the water was cold. So um, I would pull back or I would just push myself to just put more of my foot in, put two feet in, throw some water on your body. And, you know, that's the same with life. The more you resist little uncomfortable humps, the more you'll avoid ending up uh, missing out on experiences such as having a great swim in a beautiful sea. Uh, you miss out on so many more depths of life when you are just avoiding a little bit of uncomfortableness, a little bit of cold, a little bit of, you know, putting in some effort for better long-term rewards in life. So that was all. Uh, if you still struggle with training, getting into a routine, check out my other video I made. 
I think a week ago about mindful training. I have some three really simple steps that you can uh, apply there that can make your workouts a lot more enjoyable, you know, as you slowly practice these tips. Uh, they can help you experience greater depths in your workouts, different states of consciousness. You know, I don't mean anything airy fairy here. I mean different ways of how you can experience your workouts uh, instead of seeing them as something that is really forced upon you. Uh, they can be something that can be experienced in a way detached from negative thoughts. And you can basically train your brain to uh, enjoy things like exercise that maybe right now in your life you're not enjoying that much. So leave me some comments below about today's video. I'm gonna make a Q&A with um, your questions from my mindful training video that I just linked above. Uh, if you are trying these and having some questions, I'm gonna make a separate Q&A about that. And until next time, keep on training.